This is the Cessna 172, a legendary aircraft that has become a household name, particularly in the aviation community, and since its inception in 1956, the 172 quickly earned its stripes in becoming the most produced aircraft in history. More than 70 years have gone by since it first emerged on Kansas engineering drawing boards, and the plane is still used in the training of numerous pilots who learn to fly all around the world. In fact, these days, almost all qualified pilots started their flying careers on the humble 172, and many continue to fly them. Paired with its affordability and great training features, it's no wonder the Cessna 172 is such a popular airplane. Today we're going inside the Cessna 172 to talk about everything you need to know about this legendary aircraft. It's relatively easy to climb aboard, and the seat belts and airbags spring from the center to attach at the doors rather than the other way around. In other words, you best fasten your seat belts before closing the doors. Cessna hasn't changed the airplane's internal dimensions much over the years. The cabin is 39.5 inches across by 48 inches high, or 100 by 122 centimeters. While the old 172s were notorious for having shabby interiors with plastic panels separating, fading paint, and fabric wearing out, even after relatively few years in the field, Cessna completely re-engineered the interior. New 172s boast better looking interiors, which add to the value of the airplane at both ends of the sale equation, when customers take delivery and when they want to sell the airplane. Another significant improvement is the quality of the seats, seat tracks, and restraints. The new seats are extremely strong, solid feeling, nicely adjustable, and durable. The seat belts attach with a single snap and feature built-in airbags. One of the great strengths of the 172's interior is its comfort. While its dimensions aren't generous for all but the longest or widest of pilots and passengers, it's comfortable. For sightseers, the back seat of a 172 is one of the best places to be, especially with the added rear visibility from the Omnivision. For shorter people, the tall panel presents a bit of a challenge, but at least both front seats are vertically adjustable as partial compensation. Although produced under the same type certificate, the Skyhawk has a long list of improvements, including a metal panel, refined seats, better seat belts, better ventilation, and improved anti-corrosion treatment. Avionics today are also a huge improvement over earlier 172s. Textron Aviation installed the G1000 Avionics Suite in 2005, which was a major avionics panel modification. This contained early implementations of an optional autopilot as well as XM weather, topography, and traffic. The yoke also has been repositioned lower to improve accessibility and visibility. It's interesting that Cessna's choice of using sheet metal construction on its airplanes was controversial from the company's first use of the material in the late 1930s as it is today, around 80 years later. At the time the 172 was launched, traditionalists were critical of Cessna's move away from fabric-covered, welded steel construction, the classic tube and rag design and some of their concerns, including metal's susceptibility to corrosion and its more difficult repairability, has some basis in fact. Still, if ever there has been a case of design choice being validated by the marketplace, such is the case with Cessna's decision to go with sheet metal and tricycle gear. Standard today is the Garmin G1000 glass cockpit with synthetic vision technology, which displays the aircraft's position as a real-time 3D picture. On the avionics screen, it shows synthetic landscape, flight hazards, flight route markers, and highway in the sky. The Skyhawk has as standard the GFC 700 fully integrated flight control system, which includes airspeed hold, overspeed protection, pitch hold, and linked vertical navigation. The system offers accurate lateral and vertical direction, as well as capabilities. We've gotten jaded about the flat panel avionics in light airplanes, but it's important to get some perspective on the 172, an airplane that started out as a bare bones VFR flyer. Today, 
The stripped down model lacks only the three axis digital autopilot and standard features include moving map, traffic information service, electronic engine gauges, and much more. Options include synthetic vision, enhanced vision system, and the Garmin GTS 800 ADS-B upgradable active traffic advisory system. For laptops and other electrical devices, the plane also incorporates a standard 12V power converter. It has on-demand cabin illumination, as well as tinted rose and sun visors to reduce cockpit glare and eye strain. Talking about performance, the engine of choice early on in the Cessna 172 was a smooth running Continental opposed six cylinder O 300 model. By the late 1960s, Cessna had swapped out the six banger for a four cylinder Lycomi O 320. Remarkably, the standard 172 didn't get a fuel injected engine until the company reinduced the model in 1996. Newer Skyhawks both the 160 horsepower R model and the 180 horsepower S model featured fuel injected engines. The 172 Skyhawk is powered by a 180 horsepower Lycomi IO 360 L2A engine with a TBO of 2000 hours and a Macaulay fixed pitch two blade metal propeller. This combination is able to push the aircraft to a maximum cruise speed of 124 knots and up to a maximum cruising altitude of 14,000 feet or 4,267 meters with an average hourly fuel burn of 9 gallons or 34 liters per hour. The 172 has a maximum range of 640 nautical miles which is 736 miles or 1,185 kilometers. The plane can take off in 1,630 feet or 497 meters, has a maximum rate of climb of 730 feet or 223 meters per minute, and a minimum landing distance of 1,335 feet or 407 meters, all while maintaining a maximum net payload of 870 pounds or 395 kilograms and a full fuel payload of 560 pounds or 254 kilograms. The Cessna 172 was arguably the most elegant compromise in the history of aviation. It might not have been the best airplane at doing any one thing, but it was clearly the best at giving its owners a satisfying taste of everything they wanted in a personal airplane. For many of those owners, the 172 was the airplane of a lifetime. Why not? It was and is a great fun flyer, a good short haul, modest payload cross-country machine, a wonderful trainer, and a solid IFR platform. For other owners, the 172 served as a stepping stone. After getting their feet wet with what was often the first airplane of their own, buyers would often move up to something bigger, faster, and more capable. For decades, the natural step-up airplane was another Cessna product the 182 Skylane. Others moved beyond that to higher performance models. There was even a retractable version of the 172, which was popular choice with flight schools to serve as a complex trainer. Talking about price, while used, the 172s sell for $30,000 to $50,000. New models are still not inexpensive. The Skyhawk is priced between $350,000 and $450,000 depending on extras like the Garmin G1000 NXI. However, despite their gleaming rivets, these planes are totally contemporary, highly developed versions of the four-seat, entry-level general aviation airplane. While the total fixed cost is roughly $20,000 to $30,000 per year, the average hourly operating cost is estimated at $100 to $150. Thank you for staying with us till the end. Here are two videos you can watch next. If you enjoyed this video, please make sure to leave a like and subscribe. Thanks for watching.